All right, uh, hello everyone. Welcome back to Bangers, Bombs, and Banter. This is episode 55. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Good, Yay. good intro. Um, yay. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Joe. I'm here with my co-host, Brendan. I'm the co-host, Brendan. Wow, and we, we have some guests. We have some guests. Anybody Hi, I'm guest. Yeah. Hello, I'm yes. guest Jake. Oh, <laughs> uh, and the other one I is be... Ghost Wesley. I think he might be stuck. <laughs> oh, is he gone? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, oh, he is there. Hi, my name is Wesley and I have bad internet. Wonderful. There we go. And Oh, he's back. I'm he's back. Sideways. He's, he's sideways. back and he's sideways. Okay, I can be I can be iPhone vertical instead. All right. Check wow. it. Perfect. Um. Okay. Uh. Well, we have a cool episode of the podcast coming up. I guess. I think. Hopefully. I hope. No, yeah. we do. We have the coolest in, episode of the podcast yeah. yet coming up. Is the cool pro- is the cool episode in progress right now, or is it coming it up? It is. It is. Um. All right. Well, we have some music and movie news first, and then uh, after that, we're gonna go over the question of the week, which is, uh, "What's the best album cover of all time?" A oh, good answer. That, after I swear to God, Wesley, if you say "Confessions of a Dangerous Mind," okay. Well, here's here's okay. We'll talk about it in a moment. <laughs> um, after that, we're gonna be discussing the uh, Young Gravy album "Gasanova," and uh, then we're gonna be talking about uh, the movie of the week, "Vampire's Kiss." So uh, yeah, uh, I guess without further ah. Without further ado, we'll get into it. Uh, so first in music news, uh, Tyler the Creator's new album, "Call Me If You Get Lost," uh, went number one on Billboard, which is cool. Good Ooh. for him. Didn't Congratulations. Go number one. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it's doing good. It. He's doing well. Um, yeah. Um, and next in music news, uh. I'm really excited about this, okay? The Seinfeld soundtrack has gotten its first official release. Wait. Finally. Has yes. it not oh. been released previously? Nope. That's surreal. It's a 33-track collection of uh, music composed by Jonathan Wolf, And it's out tomorrow. Or, well, not tomorrow. It's out July 2nd, which was like a week ago. Or more I than say, I'm looking like at it on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so go listen to Seinfeld music, Whoa. I guess. Um, also, Seinfeld. to go with this, I don't think this was like a planned thing, uh, but also Lego is releasing a Seinfeld themed uh, set that is uh, Jerry's apartment. So, yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's Lego really sign. fucking funny. <laughs> All right, and then lastly in music news, uh, Marilyn Manson. He's back with another sexual assault lawsuit against him. Oh, yeah. Whoa! Uh, this is the fourth lawsuit. Uh, doesn't you know? Don't really sexually assault people. Point. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and then we'll move on to movie news, which is this isn't really movie news. Uh, this, there's only one piece of movie news, and it's not really movie news. Uh, but Drake <laughs> Bell has been sentenced to two years probation for child endangerment. Uh, his his victim calls him a pedophile. Uh, he will not have to register as a sex offender. Oh boy. Wow. Oh boy. <laughs> Alright, that's it for the news. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> on, on, to, on to Young Gravy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got a question of the week first, don't we? we? Got uh, yeah. Uh, we I have uh, strong opinions. Uh, oh. Yeah. So, question of the week uh, is, what is the best album cover of all time? Who's who's going? Wesley, I swear to God. It's Wesley. me, and it is Confessions of a Dangerous No, it's Mind. not. For those of you who don't know, every week Joe asks a question, every week I pop into the Bop Stop uh, chat, usually for the first time since last week, and um, just don't look at the question, but I do copy-paste an image of um, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind by Logic. Um, and this is the first time that I think that this album has been an accurate pick for the question, because I think the only... And I will, to your credit, you two, I think that the only redeeming quality of Confessions of Dangerous Minds is that its album art is really cool. Like, it's well drawn, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's um, new, really. No. But it is cool. Yeah, it doesn't really reinvent the wheel, but... It's, I, well, it's I not a wheel. It's a person. It's Logic Space, actually. So <laughs> that is, I. <laughs> Did you see that, um, that Logic is back? <laughs> of course. Yeah, he's gonna that be releasing a yeah. record soon. Didn't I mean, he say he retired from music? Yeah, he did. He did. And now he's he back. retired for less than a year. Yeah, mm. no. We all knew that was gonna happen, but like, still. Yeah. I still haven't listened to No Pressure yet, and I don't have a strong desire to. <laughs> Just like end with confession. Is like, honestly like, like you should because it's like the best thing he's released in a while. Oh, for <laughs> real? Okay, yeah. I go check yeah. it out. I just assumed it, got it was a... not. No, it generally got a pretty good reception. So that's good to hear. All right, yeah. I'll I'll go check that out. I'll get back into it. <laughs> it's definitely way better than like, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. <laughs> yeah. but... Thank fucking Christ. I was a little scared to look, you know. Um. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, Jake, do you have any thoughts? Uh, I don't have a ton of albums in my head that I really love the art for, but looking at the pictures that were posted in the in the chat, uh, Joe, I think you posted one of a, it's like a cowboy, it's got some really interesting colors and oh, that kind yeah. of stuff. So, Marty uh, Robbins gun ballads and trail songs are absolutely <laughs> right. That's my favorite album. Um, <laughs> that's uh, an artist called El Huervo. Uh, mm. Forget what that album's called. Let me get it up. Uh, that's his album uh, Van Der Rier, or however you pronounce this. Um, but yeah, the, the excellent cover art. Yeah, uh, I really I saw that and it stood out even amongst the like great album art that everybody was posting. Yeah, I definitely like. I mean, pretty much all of his albums have just incredible art. They just look amazing. I don't know who does his art, but some fantastic stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, Brenda. Yeah. What yeah. was the uh, What was the album with the the girls jumping from that uh, rooftop over the car? Oh, That's science new. fiction. My brand new. Noted. <laughs> is actually probably my answer um i don't know the, the, this album cover i don't know i i love album covers that are just like a picture of something that's happening um and one specifically ones that don't feel like they're set up yeah yeah um, this is such a commanding image yeah just something about this like album cover just i feel perfectly represents the energy of the album it's for um i don't know it just it, i love it it's fantastic um i do also want to mention uh their other album the devil and god are raging inside me i also love the art for that um i don't know but uh yeah yeah joe and i actually like we differ a lot on our opinions on this because i i prefer drawn images where joe prefers like photos it's like some are of my favorites are pure comedy by father john misty i love the images of the bowl. yeah yeah the full vinyl if you have it where it's like the inside cover in the back too is all just more of that art it's very very cool like i just like stared at it for hours um 
Get to Heaven by Everything Everything. Love that art. Uh, very, mm. very cool art. Um, I don't know. I think my, like, number one... I, I'm I'm very conflicted on this because there's just, like, so many album arts that I love. Uh, number one might be Dope Smoker by Sleep. So, uh, Interesting. But it's very cool. I love uh, just, like, the the feeling of that journey there which is very um representative of the album itself um just very cool art and like i don't know i kind of grew up on like the like sci-fi art my parents were very into that stuff so i guess there's kind of like a nostalgic aspect there as well but yeah i would also say i gravitate to the drawn album art as well i feel like Mm -hmm. that has a lot more freedom to be more expressive visually i i do like some of the pictures and the like how they're framed and the story that they tell but i don't know something about the art really gets me like the object and like you know the different things you can do with that i think it's very cool yeah Mm. Uh, how do we all feel about the lo-fi hip-hop girl as a form of album cover um, I mean, like, it's it's suitable it, for what it is, Yeah, I guess. It's not, it like, works. incredibly commanding or anything, though, I guess. Yeah, no, I feel like it's it's very suitable to, like, its format. I also think, no, something that absolutely fascinates me about that is that it, um, I mean, as you watch the live stream, the, the day progresses as the real day progresses wherever you are. Um, so, like, it will turn night outside or like you'll see the sun slowly rising over time as the stream goes on it's really interesting i feel like it kind of brings you into this world in a very like i want to call it like a shallow way it's like such a shallow like thing but it kind of like creates this depth and liveliness with such a small very very immersive yes dude has a functioning day night cycle it's it's for real dog Dude, I built a how game with a functioning day night cycle recently. I was very proud of it. <laughs> how did how did they do that? Do they do that so it's specific to the your computer and well where whatever time zone you're in? I'm not sure. I'm not I, I've like never seen it desynced, so it's very possible whoever runs the stream is just on Eastern Standard Time, but mm, yeah. I'm not sure. Because if it was their own thing where like I don't know, you can make a YouTube video specific to whatever the computer's system time is. That'd be super dope. That'd be sick as fuck. Alright. Um, I guess with that, that uh, takes us into the album that we listened to this week. Uh, I'm not sure who picked it. Who, who wants to introduce it? We didn't pick it. It picked us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that is a very accurate description yep. of what happened. <laughs> Jake, would you like to take it away? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, for those who didn't know, uh, listeners and participants in the podcast, uh, me and Wesley last year were roommates, and during the time we lived together, we and the uh, album is Gasanova we... by Young Gravy. Continue. <laughs> Nova by Young Gravy. Uh, and uh, the reason we picked, or it picked us, is because while we were living together, we both uh, uh, developed a, a, a deep respect and of Young Gravy. Kind of starting ironically into it becoming just a normal staple in the household. Mm. Uh, very much, mm. very often, uh, Wesley would throw Young Gravy or the like all the people in that like little weird space uh, up in the morning as a wake-up song uh, for the morning coffee. It was a very interesting experience. So, uh, it's an it's, uh, artist and album that is near and dear to our hearts. It is uh, Gasanova by Young Gravy. Wow. Oh, damn, I didn't realize you were going to finish with that. Yeah. I shouldn't have interrupted you, my bad. Mm-hmm. wow this album i really like this album (laughs) 
<laughs> and why, why do you movie. like it? <laughs> why, um, why do you like that album? Why do I like Casanova? Let me tell you, Jake. I don't know. It just kind of came at a really good point in my life. But it also feels like, in my mind, for those of you who listen to a good amount of Young Gravy, so gentlemen out there, um, it definitely feels like a step up and a step into the realm of like actually trying to make music versus simply being a really funny frat boy and then oops oh shit people enjoy this a lot um it feels like at least a first stab at actually making like respectable music um from this artist and for that i appreciate it yeah i think it carries the fun that his like meme music had but kind of made more i guess maybe not serious isn't the right word highly produced and more more professional i suppose is yeah. the way you can say it like better it, it production is a more serious attempt uh yeah in in the musical sense i think than his previous work mm. um and it's for for those who are connoisseurs of gravy <laughs> <laughs> love a good gravy uh yeah I don't know. This album, honestly, it's like it's fun. That's that's the point, and it accomplishes that handily. I think, like, it's stupid and fun, and I I do enjoy that aspect. Like, it's not it's trying hard enough, but not trying too hard, you know. Yeah, it's good. It's fun. That it's is a nice balance. Not what I expected to hear from you, Brendan. I'm glad. Like, I'm glad you agree. <laughs> 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 Joe, you want to say something? Um, okay. Uh, so, um, let's see. I like the, I like the beat on Gas Money. <laughs> <laughs> you know you can be scared uh, when Joe says one nice thing about one song as his opener. Every once in a blue moon, he has a funny one-liner. And that's it. Like that's what was your favorite I one liner? About. I can't. Re- it was a. It's been a little bit since I listened to it. There is one, uh, where he's like, uh, there's something about a lobotomy and getting too much brain. I don't. <laughs> that was. That was like the only one that caught my attention. Uh, I think the production sucks. <laughs> very boring wow. and generic um, and like I could I think the production could have been fine if Young Gravy was like interesting at all as just a human being uh, <laughs> Ow. Because, like I just he has the most boring delivery I have ever heard in a rapper um. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my critiques were too this harsh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I just didn't enjoy this record in the slightest. Um, he's just so uninteresting to listen to, and like, he has. This just like the the only things he talk or he talks about like one thing the entire time and it gets really old really fast. Um, it's just so boring. It no, I did not enjoy this at all. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, you know, we've never laid pipe at Whole Foods. Otherwise, you would relate to this album a little bit more. <laughs> I guess. Maybe I <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I can't be mad at those opinions because they're <laughs> they're really valid. There's just like such a special energy to it, though. I I feel like it's one of those things where you're either gonna fucking hate. I've never met someone who's mid on Young Gravy ever. The thing is, like, I don't. He has some. His earlier stuff, I don't mind that much. I think it's, like, actually pretty funny. 
Really? It, it feels a lot more playful in its delivery, but because it goes in this like more like serious direction, serious in quotes. Yeah. Um, as in like he's trying to be more of like a real artist, it goes from like meme rap to like I'm trying to be a rapper who's just comedic, like say Little Dicky, and it just doesn't work for me at all because of that. So fascinating. I definitely, I definitely think there's like a a rap uncanny valley that he's slowly approaching. Um, I think the highlight of which was when some some like actual like professional like known person I forget who it was featured on like a cover or like a remix of um, Oops or Yup one of those two. I mean, yeah, he has Ski Mask and Chief Keep on this album, yeah, which are like very big artists. So that's true. That's true. I I mean, mean, not that he hasn't had some big features before, but. That's true. It's it's interesting to see just like the the bigger names here. Every time the bigger names pop up, I just like don't enjoy it as much cuz I yeah, I feel like there's a rap on Candy Valley where it like stops being funny and it's just like, oh, wow. Yeah, I think the the remix was Oops and it was with Lil Wayne. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that was the name I recognized and I was, I don't know, I just don't like that one as much. Yeah, and I like, think when he's when he's with yeah. his like the the young gravy ecosystem, which is like <laughs> baby no money, y y two k, all those people. I think it works very well, but when he like steps out into the the quote unquote real rap, it kind of does hit that uncanny valley a bit. Young gravy ecosystem, <laughs> profound. I try. <laughs> I love that. Let's see. Were there any specific songs people had thoughts about? Um, I... At first, I... Oh, you... No, you, you can go. Um, one second. Let me find the track list. I... All right, here we go. So yeah, uh, originally I kind of listened to some of the more popular songs uh, when I first listened to it, those are the ones that really stuck out because they had better production and more work put into them. But upon listening to it again for the podcast, I found I really enjoyed um, uh, Steve Austin and uh, I believe it's uh, Drip on My Dresser, maybe. But Steve Austin really stuck out to me more than I thought would the first time. I don't know. I don't know what it was about it, but it didn't catch my eye or ear, I guess, at first. <laughs> but upon upon listening to it again, I really enjoyed it, and I couldn't tell you why. I just, for whatever reason, I really liked it, as well as uh, Miami Ice. Also, I think yeah, that one I started listening to after I saw like they dropped a music video, like m- much later after this uh, after this album got released. And for whatever reason, for songs, the visuals for this one helped me enjoy it a lot more. Even if it was just Young Gravy walking around. I, I don't know what it was, but it very much helped. It just kind of clicked. Yeah. I really like Whole Foods. I think about it. That, that's a song where like lines from that go through my head so fucking often. I just something something about the premise of that is just I really I I don't know the premise is just so fucking out there that it just like the entire song I'm just giggling my ass off I love it so much. There's it's a there's a, like goofy and doesn't overstay its welcome. He has an mm-hmm. earlier song called Cheryl that has a similar premise of picking up. Uh, it's like only a couple lines in that song, not the whole song. But it's about uh, picking up milfs and uh, and like the food aisle at the grocery <laughs> store. I, I don't know, it's like I don't know if that's uh, real experience or just uh, young gravy style, but it's always always fun when that will 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 appears. Will part appears. 
I um, personally, I really like Martha Stewart, where he implies that he fucked the VP of marketing at Olive Garden, who is a guy. So, <laughs> gay rights. <laughs> I'm impressed. Let's go. <laughs> There's so many like little jokes in here that I fucking enjoy, like, and so many quotable lines. I fucking like. I use the term spin move so fucking often now. <laughs> Whenever I'm, like, being bothered by people, it's so fucking... There's so many good little gems here that I love. Oh, yeah, the gas money. That, like... Mm. I don't know. That that one gets me in a similar way to your Whole Foods. <laughs> just, like... I don't know, just the song itself and, like, a lot of the lines just are always running in my head. Maybe not always, <laughs> but very awesome. Funny. Yeah, it's so good. So, I thought it would be really funny to think about this album in the context of the pandemic. Uh, it's really, it's right, really kind of in the midst of it. <laughs> and that's all there is to say. <laughs> so I think uh, Gravy was really going through a lot with his, uh, his isolation, you know. <laughs> quarantine and um it really comes mm-hmm. through on the music oh 100 uh, there's really yeah. kind of a somber tone you can tell uh, he's really being tortured i like the part where he's laying pipe and whole foods but <laughs> <I'd>... <laughs> <laughs> now how has that changed because due to the pandemic i guess he can't yeah. lay pipe anymore or go to whole foods mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that's the order of operations there. Yeah, he has to. I already get won. Into, he has to get Instacart. I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> so good. I also like. I don't. I don't know if this was meant to be a joke, but something that always makes me laugh during while well, listening to the album is, uh, the switch from Jack Money Bean to Tampa Bay Bust Down of like, the sheer, uh dissonance between those songs of like suddenly you're listening to a, like a bad country song or a, sh- a bad like country rap I don't <laughs> even know how to describe that song but like it always makes me laugh because of how like surprised I am to hear it even though I know it's coming and how out of character it is for him to make that song or I guess yeah I suppose out of character but I don't know it just it always puts a smile on my face when I when that song pops up Mm. That's facts. Mm. I didn't realize that these features were like actually notable people. I just haven't like known of them. I mean, who who's Mr. Ski Mask and Mr. Slump God? Are they important? Who are the important people on this album? Uh Ski Mad the Ski Mask the Slump God has almost ten million monthly listeners, so I thought he's pretty notable. He was uh, pretty big in like the cloud rap scene, and he became pretty mainstream somewhere yeah. recently. So I know he puts a lot of like visual effects into his music videos. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I haven't seen many of them, but I have heard that sentiment that they are pretty hard to watch due to all the visual effects. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then Chief Keef is also actually pretty influential in rap, so. Yeah. He's not he's not as popular, um, but he definitely uh, is, was there at the, the beginning of a lot of the modern rap. I think Interesting. Chief Keef, I think, features twice, once in Drip on My Dresser and again in Tampa Bay Bus Town. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Busy. Yeah. So. What? What? <laughs> yeah. Like you had more of a sentence there, but then you didn't. So... Me? Yeah. Oh, no. I just like, nah. Busy. Two songs. Put it in work. Several. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gasanova was actually formed. Did you know that Young Gravy wrote Gasanova at the center of a star? Oh man, that's crazy. 
<laughs> it's fucking wild, right? Yo, I really love it when like artists really get into their um their element like that, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. That, that kind of um commitment to their music is always very impressive. And you can tell that Young Gravy definitely is is a man of commitment. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking believe that to be honest. Like someone with his fucking like sense of humor and general attitude, like the frap boy energy he gives off to have the fucking motivation to get off his ass and like fucking make music is startling yeah. like i gotta respect that at least like as much as we're sitting here being like ah, ah, like gasanova at least he fucking did it dude <laughs> like yeah. he he did it he's fucking living the dream as he it doesn't, whatever we say whatever we say about his music doesn't fucking matter because he he's living he's thriving right now and that's that's something to be respected he's this, like fucking making good tunes you're right <laughs> absolutely fascinating i think a very funny line i don't know it's coming to mind now is party at my mom's house or mama's house uh, when he talks about his, like, he has, like, 18 side chicks or something that he's partying at his mom's house. I don't know. That's a, I feel like that's, I had fun with that when I first listened to it. <laughs> Not a very notable song, but I don't, the, that made me chuckle a bit. Jake thinks infidelity is really funny. Oh. Let's go. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. What are your thoughts? Have we changed your mind? <laughs> no, I mean I'm glad you guys enjoy it. I just don't. <laughs> you would. That's totally fair. It's just like I just find it like just not in- interesting at all. Like it, it's not fun for me. Not even not even fun to listen to. It's just it's just, yeah. I just find it very boring. Um, I think it's a lot of it to me is just young gravy as like a rapper just does not have much presence on the the mic like he just it feels like you can just completely forget he's there um he has kind of a monotone delivery to a lot of the lines um which isn't necessarily bad but the music he makes feels like it needs someone who's a lot more energetic and like hyped up um you know Mm. i feel like i would enjoy this album if like denzel curry was on it but (laughs) (laughs) hold the fuck up that's the best idea i've ever heard (laughs) i think like this album is kind of separates itself from the other the earlier stuff also in as you said it's more serious this time but i think the production is a bit more like i guess high energy and like a little more creative like they have a bunch of different influences in this whereas before it was very often like take a iconic like 60s song and just put a trap beat on it yeah but (laughs) this is like their actual attempt and like I mean, they still kind of do that. I think the It's Always Sunny theme was in one of the earlier songs. Uh, yeah. Always Saucy, I think. Uh, but, and like, there's still the like, the young gravy feel, but it is a lot more, much more like produced and high energy and like a lot going on in the production. So I do see yeah. what you mean with like, it kind of, sometimes drowned it could drown you could see it as drowning him out mm. yeah i think it also just like the like more glossy sounding production sort of takes away from a lot of the charm of young gravy for me like i think just having like you know uh these like kind of more minimalist uh you know more lo-fi beats i guess on his previous work, just, like, it adds to his personality. Um, whereas here, it, it just, it puts him on the same, like, playing field as, like, other more interesting rappers. 
Um, I, I'm, it just feels like I'd much rather go listen to someone else who has a lot more, like, personality to them than Young Gravy. So. I can see that. Yeah, no, I think that's actually, like, a really fair point about this album. There is, like, a lot going on. It's, like, growing up, but he's got to, like, kind of grow into those shoes, you know? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Are we are we wrapping up the discussion? Is that I think. Time? Yeah. Um. So like, right. I guess. Do we want to do any like conclusions on that, or we just want yeah. to? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We're doing conclusions. I guess I'll go first since I'm definitely the most negative. Uh, but I just find the record to be very boring uh, and not very interesting. I feel like Young Gravy doesn't bring that much personality to this record. Um, and whereas on his like earlier work, his, his early stuff is very charming because of uh, how like uh, like all the production kind of like complements his very like almost a lazy sounding style on here it just to me shows how far he needs to go for me to be interested in his music um so yeah uh i'd give this record like a two to a three out of ten just did not enjoy it at all brutal <laughs> sorry <laughs> All right. Who's next? Can I go? Oh, I want to yes. go. Um, I love this album dearly, but in the way you love a son, not in the way you love an album you like a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do with that information what you will. However, um, I see that I see this definitely Gasnova as a step in the right direction for Young Gravy. Um, but I also see it as, like, a somewhat rough transition. I, there are absolutely only, like, three songs on this I actually listen to. Um, I think I think it was a step in the right direction, but I'm, I'm happy with it being a small step, given that he's still kind of sticking to what makes him unique and interesting and fun and separates him from just an actual rapper. I felt like he maintains that really well. So I say keep going, keep it up. Uh, oh, a number. Uh, I'm gonna go five. Oh, I was expecting higher, but okay. I think that five is about the number of songs I actually enjoy on this album. <laughs> 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 but God, do those songs go so fucking hard? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Go, would you like go. to go, Brennan? No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I have a pretty similar sentiment unsurprisingly i suppose i think it's not the best sonically or uh perhaps musically but i don't know it's a very fun experience it's the type of music that i love to just turn my brain off and do anything else whether it's i don't know <laughs> you could read a good book while jamming out to some gravy i don't know you could like uh, you can that like bend corners so in your hard. in your Honda Civic. I don't I don't know what, I don't know what you do, but, <laughs> but like it it is a very it's a very good album. Or I guess as a couple of good songs to just turn your brain off to and enjoy. Uh, I think I think some of the songs are a step in the right direction. I think some of it does lose the charm, but I think I think it still sticks to gravy's overall personality and style so uh i personally really like it but i do recognize the the criticisms of them so uh going along with the number thing i'll probably give it a a six i'd say because mm. i and very much enjoy it but recognize that it could be it yeah yeah could right, cool cool that's that's good um Personally, I mean, I don't know. This album is like, it's fun while it's on. 
Uh, it's not an album I'm gonna put on very often, though, personally. Uh, I mean, this whole, like, comedy music isn't really my style in the first place, but, um, I don't know, there's, there's, like, a couple funny lines here or there. Uh, I don't think a lot of the production is, like, bad, but it's, it's not, like, super standout either. It definitely is more serious, and that is both a blessing and a curse, as we've said, but, I don't know. It's fun enough. I had fun with it. Uh, I'm at like a 6 out of 10. Nice. Alright. I'm really happy with that. That is exactly what I was hoping for when I when it submitted this album. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, someone's gonna shit on it, however. <laughs> it deserves a midline. Alright. Well, with that... We can move on to the movie. Uh, yeah. To, uh, uh, your choice, Brendan, right? Actually. Uh, yeah, I guess. So, because we were <laughs> trying to decide... We were literally... The last podcast episode, uh, we were trying to decide what the movie and album was during that episode. So, um, <laughs> when I realized that nobody... The, our two guests didn't have a movie preference, it was up to me to pick. Um I looked at Letterboxd and looked at some films that I hadn't seen that were on my watch list, and uh, Vampire's Kiss is on there. And uh, this is a classic Nicolas Cage performance, and I'm just aware of how everybody loves Nicolas Cage. So, uh, easy pick. We got it in there. Vampire's Kiss. It's so good. I love it. I am so good. fucking heartbroken that the four of us were not in the same room to watch this. Oh my god, it would have been, so been a fucking riot it would have been <laughs> such a banger I, I i feel like the vampire skins is not the same when you're alone watching it on your computer in your office the way i did um i feel like i, <laughs> I feel like that's probably the worst way to consume this movie but god am i still excited about it it's um i just i guess i want to start off by saying this is probably the best performance i've ever seen in a film <laughs> Nicholas Cage's performance in this film. I'm not I'm not even joking. Like, yes, it's a hilarious performance, but it very much does what it's supposed to do and it conveys it so well. Absolutely. Yeah. It was masterful in the most backwards ass way. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, his performance really put this uh the movie on the map. I uh, like mm, definitely. I both because it was really crazy but also because i don't know it it really i don't think it would have had the the cult following that it would if it was just crazy man does crazy things i think it's it has a unique brand of like unhinged but like also mm-hmm. just very viscerally unhinged that <laughs> makes it uh. very loved <laughs> that is oh my lord this the number of like moments I I was like doing something else while I was watching this movie. I had it in the background. I was listening to it as I do with most movies. No movie has commanded my attention in the way this one does. <laughs> oh man, he is just like he just goes all in. Did you know um the scenes where he's like on the street? They like didn't have the budget to like close off like, the streets, so he's just, like, doing that around, like, normal people. <laughs> you know what's going on. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it feels that way. It really does. It, it feels like they just let Nick Cage, like, onto the set and didn't tell any of the other actors what was going on. Like, <laughs> for real. I, I also heard of a sim- similar story of um the scene where he eats the cockroach that that's a live cockroach and he's the one who want he suggested that scene to the director and the director had him do it twice just to get the shot right and uh, i was uh, i when i heard that it's like wow that's a dedication oh yeah um man oh my god there's so many quotable lines from the film uh, but, like, my favorite scene has to be when he uh, starts yelling for his, like, secretaries, for his secretary, and then 
he goes out of his office and just jumps on the desk and points Oh my it. god. There you go. That was so good. <laughs> that was terrifying. <laughs> I... Oh my god. It's what Nicolas Cage as a person is worse than a horror movie. Like the way he acts, he's always <laughs> acting like he's in a horror movie. No matter what the role is, no matter what the tone is, like the faces he made, it's like it's like he acts as if he's wearing a costume, but he's not. He's just a man and he doesn't know and someone has to tell him. Someone has to tap him on the shoulder. Oh my god. Um so- a, l- a little background. I think I had talked about this a little before we started filming, but I had no idea what this movie was before getting into it. I did not know of the cult status. I didn't even know Nick Cage was in it, or I saw his name in the thing. I did not. E- I didn't even read the description of the movie. I just it just was like, well, they said this is the movie for the week, so I'll just throw it on. Uh, mm-hmm. And I was very thoroughly surprised with what I got. I was expecting like a like a two bit monster flick and <laughs> it was very much not that so <laughs> i was i was kind of similarly i was like kind of doing something else up until you know nick cage started yelling and like talking about <laughs> being aroused by a bat and then jumping on tables so like <laughs> i i i was very 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 surprised but i ended up really enjoying it yeah I have to say, this is like American Psycho, but like 10 years before American Psycho came out. <laughs> um, like, genuinely. It feels like it has... Well, it feels like a lot of like the themes within the movie are very similar to that of American Psycho, where Nick Cage... Um, th- American Psycho is like more of just a straight-up like satire. Uh, but in... Like, Nick Cage can just, like, get away with anything, basically. There's the scene in the boardroom where he's, like, where all of the, like, I, I don't know what roles they have. Exactly, the whatever. Like, the, yeah. the, the board's people? Yeah, they're all just, like, laughing about how Nick Cage is, like, mentally torturing his secretary. Um, I have the quote. The quote is nothing like a little office trauma to keep things interesting. <laughs> oh my god. Um, that was so, like, shit just happens in this movie. Yeah. And it, <laughs> oh um, my god. But I, I remember. I, oh, sorry. You, know, you, you can go. I'm sorry. I remember thinking partway through the movie of, like, I don't, I don't know what the plot is. It's just kind of, <laughs> like, it eventually develops into something more but like the first act of this movie is very much just this shitty guy going through his daily routine of like hooking up with girls and then like torturing his secretary (laughs) occasionally talking to his therapist like it was it was a very strange first act i I have to say well it's a strange movie but like a a very strange opening yeah it's Definitely. it's surprisingly slow for how much like chaos it contains. <laughs> like once it ramps up, you're like, "Holy fucking shit!" But before <laughs> that, it's like surprisingly slow. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's very interesting how just like Nick Cage is literally like he's literally able to get away with everything. And no one questions his actions, like, ever. (laughs) Um, Like, he's going, like, he's very apparently, like, going insane, um, like, in the office. And no one cares or, like, asks to get him, like, treatment or anything. Um, Like, the desk thing. If the desk thing happens once, that's like, whoa, buddy, like, hey, don't fucking do that shit again. Um, but yeah, like, he's just, he does so much, like, awful shit, and he's able to get away with it. There's, I mean, towards the end of the film, he kills the one woman by biting her neck open. (laughs) With the Um, plastic teeth? (laughs) Yeah, and, uh, he just gets away with that. Like, it's reported in the news later, but, like, no one ever questions why he has blood on his, like, clothes or anything. (laughs) And around his mouth. (laughs) Um, I also really love how, like, 
he's just he's such a piece of shit that like even his imaginary relationships don't work out. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like literally he starts like, yelling at Sharon. Uh, oh my god, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the film he literally like imagines a like a girlfriend who's like perfect for him, literally. And within five minutes oh, they are okay. over. He yeah. just like starts screaming at her. <laughs> um Oh man. Uh, speaking of like nobody questioning that his actions, there was like a, I think My it was like a recurring bit of every once in a while I, one of the sides. Okay. Of, uh, hello. Oh, oh he's gone. gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every once in a while, one of the side characters will call out something he's doing and then walk out of frame. I think yeah. the most notable example of I'm that here. was when he was when he was in the yeah, bathroom. Hello. Wesley? You're teleporting around your room right now. He's gone again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so... Uh, I think the, the most noticing, notable example was the woman in the bathroom. So, uh, no. Nick Cage having <laughs> follows Alva to the, to the, to the, to the women's restroom. And then the lady walks out, and it's like, "What the hell are you doing?" And then walks out of frame. I feel yeah. that that sort of encounter of very casually asking, "What the hell you're doing?" and then moving out of frame <laughs> is something that happened multiple times during the film. I think yeah. with the taxi driver, and then with somebody else that I don't remember. There's but one time where he's in the bathroom and he like fails to see himself in the mirror. He's like, "Holy shit, I'm a vampire!" And the guy in the stall is like, "No, you're not. Get out of here. Stop <laughs> acting." <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I like kind of on that note. Um, was this this was supposed to be a comedy, right? Yes, it's like a black comedy, basically. That was what I understood it as. Yeah. Okay. I don't. Hip. I don't think anybody. I like should be taking this film too seriously. With Nick Cage films, I really never try to guess. <laughs> yeah. Good. It is. It is definitely. Oh so... my lord! Such uh, an unbelievable like. Oh. Oh. Unbelievable! Oh. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. What is unbelievable? I have to know. We'll never know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh what? Wait, oh. is it me? Are y'all waiting for me to say something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you you're said saying it's, it's such unbelievable. an unbelievable, and then you stopped. <laughs> but no, but then Brendan was like talking. How far behind am I? I oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I oh my god! It took y'all four seconds to laugh at that. This explains a lot. Oh no. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hi. Hello. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, we'll, uh, we'll oh! get through this. <laughs> oh no, we're just... <laughs> so late. <laughs> oh, he's gone. <laughs> oh, my god. I'm back at normal speed. Well, I know, back. hopefully. He's, he's back. All right, um, but to get us back on track, um, I was saying like the um, the 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 actions that was the movie are so intense three. that they are definitely meant to be taken comedically. Like I don't know how you cannot laugh when like he jumps on the desk or he goes A B C D like that. Oh, I love, <laughs> oh my God, that's I love so the alphabet scene. Good. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> So, uh, funny, I heard that oh, I scene see. in particular was uh, entirely, chor like, the hand movements, he entirely choreographed them uh, <laughs> to his to his cat or dog or something. He was like, he went through each letter and had a different hand motion for that. <laughs> According to him, I, like, who knows what, <laughs> if that's real or not, but I feel like that's... That's fun. That's something that Nick Cage would do, I think. That's so, so. believable, yeah. though. 
You don't have, have those kind of like freak outs just because you exist. Like you're not born with that kind of fucking talent. Alan. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Um, oh there's been, no, my life there's been, again. No, I think we were just taking a moment to laugh. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, no. there's, there's been times throughout the last couple of days that I have thought of different scenes happening and just giggled to myself like, <laughs> like, like a psychopath. Because, <laughs> I, I don't know, it's... There's just... There's something timeless about it, too. <laughs> yeah. well, actually, that's how you... I wanted to touch on it. Is that He's like, trying. like this, He's trying. this? This this movie, <laughs> movie like, like a very <laughs> prevalent part of pop culture. He's, oh, he got it. Out. This, this was like. <laughs> right, I think he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Am I teleporting you again? Yeah, a little bit. Grr. You're a robot right now. <laughs> oh. oh, the end of man joke. Um. Fuck. Beep boop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my phone too. Uh, There's no other end. <laughs> um. All right. Maybe we don't. Maybe it's the video. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Right. I'm gonna leave it turned off for for a bit. Okay, right. you're a little bit better, so that's good. Yeah. Um, I I spend eight hours a day working on video, like all day, literally all day. I don't know why. I know. <laughs> what? It's crazy, man. You hit Discord's time limit. Yep. <laughs> I have a I have a question. I suppose about the movie. Uh, did so since I knew basically nothing about this going in, uh, I was actually kind of caught off guard by the twist of everything happening in his head. I okay. like didn't. I didn't pick up on the fact that he imagined the girlfriend at first mm. so like it did actually catch me off guard once he was like looking him at the mirror being like oh i when he clearly is not a vampire yeah uh so i was i was wondering if you all at what point did the the girlfriend thing was a pretty easy thing to pick up on because he was like doing the tea on the bed to the to the person who wasn't there but the yeah. I'd say the thing that more surprised me was the therapist being in his head. Yeah, I didn't that's think that was real. That's the thing is I'm I don't know if we even really know if his therapist is real or not, because while we don't ever see anyone else in the therapist's like office, um, I I guess it's not necessarily implied that it's not real. Um, because I think there is a noticeable difference between when he is, like, very obviously talking to the therapist in his head and when he's talking to his therapist normally. Um, mm. like, it feels like there are points where the therapist actually, like, challenges things he says. Um, like, she, during, like, the, the misfile scene, um... <laughs> She brings up that, like, you know, someone could have misfiled it, you know, um, the paper or whatever. Yep. 
Um, whereas in when he's just talking to her in his head, um, like nothing that she brings up is uh, challenging to him. It's like already stuff he agrees with, essentially. Mm. So I'm not 100% sure if the therapist is just like he made her up or uh, if maybe he's just going more insane <laughs> and the character becomes like less real um, as he becomes just crazier, basically. Yeah. So, like, there is there is a therapist, but he starts to imagine her? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. I think that final scene is when he imagines her. Because I always, I interpreted it that she was real. And then, because he makes the phone call and he's like, hey, I'm very sick. I need to see you early Monday morning or whatever. Mm. Um, but uh, by that time, he's like, you are gone. So. Mm. Oh, well. Poor Nick Cage. Being a fake poor, vampire. Poor Peter Lowe. <laughs> Peter Lowe. <laughs> that fucking... Oh my god. It, Nick Cage. I know it's been said a million times, but it's just Nick Cage. Nick Cage is just Nick Cage in movies. Yeah. Yeah. It's so... It's such a real thing. But at this point, that's kind of like... It's kind of awesome, though. Like, people... people. I mean, it might be because of this movie or in some of his like, some of the other works he's done, but, like, people go to movies specifically to see the Nick Cage thing. Yeah. Like, Nick Cage being Nick Cage, so, I guess, <laughs> props to him for making, like, basically commodifying his personality. <laughs> I believe this was kind of a breakout performance for him. That makes sense. Sort of? It... I wouldn't say it's a... I don't think it's a breakout performance, it's, because... It's, it was a new thing for him because he had been in more kind of serious roles, I guess. Yeah. Uh, um, it wasn't. This was not a successful movie. <laughs> no, it was say. not. It did not make its budget back. Um, but it slowly, slowly became like a cult movie over time. Um. Yeah, he had been so, in definitely some more serious stuff before that. Like, he had been in uh, Raising Arizona, so. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing. Yeah. Uh, this is literally my only negative about this movie. I hate uh, how Nick Cage speaks. I hate the way he talks. No, like, I there's a weird thing. bit. Yeah. Okay. There, no, it's... It's, like, perfect to me. <sighs> like, it's just, like... It feels, uh, like, very performative in a way that, like, works for his character. So, like... Um... You'll, like... You can kind of notice that he, the way he talks, like, differs depending on his situation and who's with him. Um, so he talks a lot differently when he is in like a position of power over someone compared to uh, when he's just like talking to like or when he's talking to like his imaginary vampire girlfriend <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, it just I don't know. I think it makes like an interesting distinction between. Uh, how uh, confident he is when he's able to like abuse his uh, power and authority over someone um, and compared to when uh, he has no power basically yeah but he sounds dumb yeah no but it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's I, perfect for him I, I don't mean to get political or like cause problems here but i very genuinely think like he sounds like donald trump whenever he does he's like in power <laughs> i like the the cadence is like, so like laughably similar and i got to imagine that like he was probably popular on tv around the same time that like this was being filmed mm. like i can't confirm that i didn't look that up but it's it's so like it's such a distinctive like voice yeah yeah 
I remember being annoyed at first with the voice, but then kind of realizing what this movie was and thinking, uh, like kind of getting into it afterwards. But mm-hmm. at first, it definitely was very jarring to hear. Like a, it was like a sort of, I, there was an accent of something. I it was like yeah, his accent New York. Changes. I it think. was like New York mixed with like a tinge of British, but <laughs> yeah. it was it was very very strange with like a with like a like as you said Wesley like a Trump cadence, but with uh, that yeah. accent it was very, it was very jarring at first, but I think it ended up working pretty well once he became unhinged. Yeah, absolutely. He definitely, yeah, he definitely his voice definitely changes at certain points because there's times where he sounds like he's talking more normally and those times where he sounds like he's trying to do like a british accent just like straight up um yeah i don't know it's i love it (laughs) (laughs) it's perfect for it um but yeah 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 we haven't said what this film's about (laughs) <laughs> oh the cage is a vampire but no he's not uh well it's about more than that but yeah but the the, nah. true, va- the true vampire was in us the whole time <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i don't know i think i mean i i guess like just a summary of the plot is like nick cage imagines he has a vampire girlfriend who uh bites him and dominates him and then he imagines he's turning turning into a vampire uh and then uh he goes crazy he was ar- he was already kind of crazy but he he goes crazy i guess basically um mm. i mean i don't know yeah i mean i, think- uh, I don't know i I kind of interpret it as like a, a deep metaphor for like disillusionment with like love, but I connections. I don't. That's not what I got out of it. Okay. I thought it was much more like a commentary on essentially yuppie culture in the eighties and uh, the way that these uh, you know men in power like abuse their positions, um, but also how part of, like, the reason for that is because they are just, like, completely, like, disconnected emotionally from, like, anyone. (laughs) That's a a good take. Uh, Like, they just have, they're just, yeah. they have no clue how to, like, do anything that is, uh, I guess, romantic in any way. (laughs) I think also the the fact that like nobody around them, whether bystanders or colleagues or any romantic partners, really question anything the yeah. these powerful men do is also kind of wrapped into that as well. Yeah. Of like the people who I guess are successful and wealthy and should be happy are can kind of do whatever they want, whether that's pretend they're a vampire or torture their secretary or kill a person with plastic teeth yeah it's absurd but i think it's that's something part of what they were going for at least yeah that's why that's why i said it's american psycho but for american psycho it feels very similar in terms of like it's like main ideas so yeah Is that are we are we wrapping up? Are we? I'm good. We we've talked yeah, about Nick's so. excellent performance. Yeah, gorgeous. Who wants awesome. to go first? Uh, I guess I could. Um, I did not at all expect what I got, <laughs> but I was very pleasantly surprised and happy. 
uh, as Wesley said, I would have loved to watch this with other people in a, like a on a couch with popcorn, maybe like instead of on my laptop in a college dorm room uh, <laughs> at like twelve at night. Uh, there was, I think, something might have been lost, but I still had a very good time. Mm-hmm. I think it's a timeless movie that could be watched over and over again. Uh, but like, I don't think it's by any means, it's not perfect. And it's very much carried by Nick Cage's performance. Uh, so I guess I'll give it a, I'd say enjoyment wise, I'd give it like a, like a seven or an eight movie wise. It's probably a couple lower than that, but I'm going to stick with the enjoyment one. So I'd say, I'd say a strong seven. Okay. Okay. Right. Good. Um, I guess I'll go. I don't see why not. Um, I love this film. I really, really enjoy it. I think um, it does just about everything it needs to do right. Um, it's, I, it's thoroughly entertaining. I find uh, I'm like hooked from start to finish. Uh, fantastic performances, not just from Nick Cage. There are other actors there as well, but it's very much centered on Nick Cage. Some very quotable lines, such as, a bat? Holy shit. Um, (laughs) 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 Um, The only only problem is uh, Nick Cage, I hate his voice when he makes that sound. Nine out of ten. (laughs) Wesley, do you want to go or do you want... I can, I can take this real quick. All right. um, God, this movie's so much fun. It is so fucking goofy. It's so over the top. And, it, like, it, it has so many classic Nick Cage moments in it. It's like, there's no getting around the fact that it's a Nicolas Cage movie, but if you're going to watch a Nicolas Cage movie, it's, it should be this one. Uh, fucking seven. I give it a seven out of ten. All right. Um, uh, I guess that's wow. Um, I love this movie. It is one of the most engrossing performances I've ever seen, uh, and genuinely one of the most interesting, like weird out there plot like storylines I've just seen in a film. Um. And it leads to some very interesting commentary on, like, yuppie culture in the 80s. And I I fucking love this film. Uh, I'd give it a 10. I think it's genuinely, like, a masterpiece in just how insane it is. Um, but yeah. 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 <laughs> um, all right. That, cool. there, there you go. There's the podcast. Wow. 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 There it goes. Our guests for coming on. Yeah. Um, tune in. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, we're not yeah. done yet. We're not done yet. You'll get oh. your closing comments. Tune in next week. Uh, oh, we didn't say that question of the week for next week. Oh, yeah. Shoot. I got to fucking think of one quickly. One sec. I have, uh, them. I have a bunch wait. written down. Don't worry. The album is going to be... Work and Non-Work by Broadcast, their first compilation album. And the movie is going to be Portrait of a Lady on Fire, directed by Celine Sciamma. I think is how you pronounce that. Yeah. Um, Tune in next week for that. And our our question is... Uh, Well, I'll give you two options. We could do serious or really dumb. Really dumb. All right. Uh, what is what is your favorite dinosaur? That's the question. question. Actually, yeah, it's a good question. Anyways, um, again, yep. thank you to our guests. Do you guys have any closing thoughts that you want to want to do? Any plugs, perhaps? Oh my God! Yes, actually. Um, hi, my name is Wesley Elmer. I uh, make video games for a living, um, and recently I just released a tool called Easy Align to the Unity Asset Store. It should be up in a week. <laughs> Um, until then, you can go ahead and check me out on my YouTube channel at Wesley Elmer. Um, also, thank you so much for having us, our gracious guest host. Fuck. You know what? Y'all are the guests now. Do you have any closing comments? 
uh can you post to twitter more yeah that would be exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> what, on which account i have a lot of twitter accounts now the, just the my, bo- the my regular stuff. oh the boss cop account <laughs> fuck yeah I can't even call it content for my own fucking twitter but yes i'll try oh it's okay <laughs> just uh, you can just though, like but... link when videos come out <laughs> so noted <laughs> uh i'm jake uh i also make video games uh nothing really to plug but thank you so much for having me it's been a lot of fun yeah thank you um yeah. hope you all have a good day